And welcome back to America Decides. The 2024 presidential candidates were out on the campaign trail and in the press over the weekend after last week's historic arraignment of former President Trump in Miami. For more, CBS News political director Finn Gomez joins me now, fresh off reporting in Miami. Welcome That's back right. to Washington. Um, before we get to uh, the Republican field, I know you have some new reporting on Biden. We were just talking about this with Nancy a little right. bit. Um, but, you know, he has been pretty tepid in terms of going after Trump on the indictment. What's kind of the strategy there? Have you been talking to Democrats about do they want to see more from him? I, I, yeah, I have been talking to, uh, to Democrats, uh, some top Democrats actually, uh, you know, connected to his campaign and also some of those from his core uh, constituency, if you will, and that's his, uh, the labor unions. Mm. And they frankly say that um, that they want to see more engagement. They want to, they want to, he has been silent. They want to see more from the president. Uh, the strategy about uh, being above the fray is not a winning strategy, they tell me. Mm. Uh, we're not going to be distracted by the bully. And that strategy is, is what happened in 2016, they say. Mm. And they want to see a pugilist right now. They want to, mm. you know, right now, this is, this is the issue that the top, that the Democratic voters are talking about. And they want to mm. see the president more engaged because they feel that if he remains silent, uh, uh, mm -hmm. former President Donald Trump sets the narrative. And it, again, it, it is echoes. There are echoes of 2016 if that happens. Mm -hmm. And they want to see their president engaged. And that's interesting, too, because Labor just had the big endorsement of Biden sure. over the weekend, and he's trying to seize that momentum. Um, switching gears a little bit, um, former Attorney General Bill Barr was on Face the Nation yesterday, and our Robert Costa, our colleague, talked to him yeah, a little bit about um, uh, about Trump and kind of what kind of risk he would be. Mm -hmm. Fascinating interview. Let's play a little bit of it and talk about it on the other side. You know, he's like a nine-year-old, a defiant nine-year-old kid who's always pushing the glass toward the edge of the table, defying his parents to stop him from doing it. It's a means of self-assertion and exerting his dominance over other people. And he's, he's a very petty individual who will always put his interests ahead of the country's, his personal gratification of his, you know, of his ego. Okay, so some really tough words from his former right. attorney general. Um, but you're not hearing Republicans say what Barr is saying, with the exception of Chris Christie. How are Republicans kind of navigating all of this? Uh, you mentioned the word tepid. I think that would be an accurate one to use in this in this setting as well, because we haven't heard that much from his primary competitors, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they have there. There's been a, the dial has moved up slightly, if you will, mm -hmm. with some criticism towards the uh, towards the former president uh, after this indictment news. Uh, and you know, there's been talk of you know, Penn said there were serious allegations. Uh, there's been talk even, but there's been more talk of perhaps like pardoning him if he were mm. convicted, like from Nikki Haley, from Vivek Ramaswamy, from others. So, but why why are we not seeing that, Caitlin? And I spoke to a senior Trump official who said uh, that it's a political calculation, they believe, uh, mm. that they can't go after the former president because if they do, they risk losing 50 percent of Republican voters. He is the mm. most popular figure in that party right mm. now. And for them, they believe it's a political calculation. Uh, however, you know, this is a race. Are we yeah. going to be seeing some contrast between these yeah. rivals? I think you almost have to, perhaps, if you mm -hmm. if you do want to set uh, a tone and tenor to set your campaign as we go forward in the cycle. Yeah, because you would imagine as someone competing for the Republican nomination, if the leader of the pack has a federal indictment, you would imagine that would be an opening. Um, but to your point, that's interesting how the Trump campaign is seeing this because our own polling showed 72 percent of Republican voters believed that this was all political more than anything else. Um, right. You know. and, and they're and they're letting essentially Chris Christie make may be mm. their, their that that having that space being the 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 attack yeah. dog, if you will. Mm, and yeah. you know, they see Christie is almost on a, quote, suicide mission uh, because mm -hmm. uh, he you know, what is his what is his path outside of New Hampshire? Many are asking. And I think they're allowing that to happen and trying to, and again, having this political calculus that they can gain um, if perhaps yeah. these these indictments and these investigations become uh, more significant and, and, and yeah. affect the trajectory of the race. Yeah. And, and so on that note, I mean, Chris Christie has been asked about whether he'd sign this debate pledge to support right. the eventual nominee. Um, and he said he would essentially take it as seriously as Donald Trump did in 2016. Um, are, you know, how, how, how are Republicans kind of navigating that? Is, is that really an issue here? I mean, it seems like there's not much the RNC can do about it. It's more of an issue uh, for those who may not hit that criteria, mm. right, for the debate stage. That's mm -hmm. 40,000 unique donors. It could be a dollar, essentially. Mm -hmm. 
but and also if they if they have uh, if they get net more than one percent uh, over national and early state mm -hmm. polling that it's recognized by the RNC. However, Asa Hutchinson, Chris Christie, they've been critical of that pledge. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, Asa Hutchinson for one has said, you know, how can I endorse a, if he gets in, if he gets convicted? How can I endorse mm -hmm. a convicted felon? Uh, but uh, will it be? Will it have an impact? I mean, the biggest impact, as you mentioned, Caitlin, mm -hmm. is if Donald Trump shows up at these debates. I was there in Iowa in 2016. Yeah. He did not show up at that debate. So Christie has a point. Will Donald Trump show, show up regardless of the pledge or not? At all. Right? And that would, so, that would certainly change Christie's so that's calculus the there. Yeah, something yeah. that we might have to wait till August to figure out. Um, Finn Gomez, thank you very much. Good Thanks to see you, as always.